Good afternoon, my rogue army. My name is Erin Rogoff, and I would like to welcome you all back to my booktube channel. I do not go a day without reading. Whether it's reading a book, or a text, or a map, or a road sign, or a GPS, I always read. It's just a part of my prime directive. One easy way you would definitely be able to tell if I was not me was if I said I hate reading. Like, I would be a pod person from Invasion of the Body Snatchers if I suddenly said booktube is not my cup of tea. Because it definitely is, even though I do not have a cup of tea. Anyway, this video is going to be a March 2020 wrap-up of all the books that I have read this month alone. Starting with Glass by Ellen Hopkins. Uh, this is a reread book, and it's a young adult fiction poetry novel. It is so good, and even though the book is really thick, it's also such a quick read, if you think about it, because the poetry is written in free verse, there aren't a lot of words on the page, but it is still so meaningful and deep that it is like an addictive read. Not that Crank is addictive, because it is, but the reading is just as addictive, too, if that makes any sense at all. So, one of the questions is, what do I like about the book? And it can't be the one-word answer of everything. I love the strong poetry about such a dark topic, like falling into the world of drugs and Christina Snow is at her lowest. And one of the things that I do like at the end of the book is Christina's hope that things can change. Things can change. But you've got to be very, very strong and very, very careful about not falling back into those old, dark ways, which is such a hard thing to do. I've seen friends go down the path of drugs, and it hurts me seeing them in such a low point in their lives that sometimes I want to help them. Well, of course, I always want to help them, but sometimes I have to realize that I can't help them, so I back away. And if you're watching this and you were a friend who was affected by drugs, this is not an attack on you. I just wanted to sort of explain that I don't know what to do, technically. So anyway, one of the other things that is very interesting about Glass is how this series actually got me back into watching Breaking Bad, which my aunt hates because it glorifies selling drugs, which isn't cool in any way. But anyway, I would highly recommend reading Glass because it is such a strong, powerful book that gives you a lot of hope in all this darkness. Like, is Christina going to change? How is it going to affect her kids? Are they going to change? Are they going to slip back into Christina's path of drugs? Or are they going to make something of themselves, too? So anyway, moving on to Kate Bender, The Kansas Murderess by Vance Rudolph. This is one of the books that I read for the first time, and it's a historical nonfiction book. And it is a standalone novel, which is also really interesting, because if I read a standalone novel, then I'm wondering, okay, is there going to be another sequel or something? So that was pretty interesting. What do I like about the book? I would have to say the topic in general, because Kate Bender fascinates me in a very strange way. And I swear I am not a serial killer, like, or like Todd Bowden from Apt Pupil by Stephen King. I just have a dark fascination with certain things. Um, one of the other things that I like are the truths and the rumors to Kate Bender. Some people believe that the man who masqueraded as her brother was actually her husband, but the, tr the rumor is way creepier, like Jamie and Cersei creepy. And then this also titillates my curiosity and gives me more questions about Kate. What did Kate Bender really look like? Because there are so many descriptions of her appearance. Was Kate involved in witchcraft or was that just an exaggerated rumor? And what happened to Kate Bender and the Bender Bunch in the end? Because there have been people who have claimed that they have seen her up to the 1920s. And there's just so much mystery to this that it fascinates me in a way that, like, can that goes way above the Nancy Drew intrigue of everything. Another book that I read was The Lady on the Road by Nick Herntier. It is a book that I read for the first time, and it's a contemporary fiction horror novel. It's a standalone, and it's a really quick read. What did I like about the book? I could actually read it in one sitting, even though I rated it two stars because I wasn't overly fond of it. But I did like the description of the ghostly lady, which was really fascinating and dark and like, okay, I'm driving in the road in the middle of the night. I do not want to meet this woman whatsoever. 
And then I also liked that I could read the book in one sitting, even though I already said this. But I read this when I was waiting for the bus to my campus weeks ago, before the coronavirus broke out. And moving on to the fourth book that I have read this month is The Basement by Chad P. Brown. It is a first-time read. It's a paranormal fiction horror suspense novel, and it's another standalone. And what did I like about the book? Okay, I will be comp completely honest here, I didn't like the book at all. I rated it one star on Goodreads, and I would have wanted more in gory detail, but then again, I am not a psychopath, so I don't need to know about, like, pulling fingernails out of your fingers, which is just creepy because the manicure would go away and, oh my gosh. Um, one of the other things that I didn't like was... Well, I will admit, because of M. Night Shyamalan's movie Signs, I never go into the basement of my house alone because reading this just made me think of that. And my brother jokes that Signs scared me for life and he might be right. So this book was very creepy and it just made me think of that. And my brother's like, oh, I'm getting... Sorry about that. That scared the heck out of me. And we were just talking about a very dark topic. So that was just like, oh my god. Anyway, moving on to the fifth and final book that I have read this month is The Strain by Frost K. It was a first-time read, and it's a science fiction, dystopian fiction novel, and it is book 0 0.5 of the Domination of Ash series, which sounds very intriguing, don't you think? What did I like about the book? Well, I actually rated it three stars because I couldn't exactly tell if I liked it or if I disliked it. But I did like the theories about the end of the world. Nuclear war, biohazard, weapons, and all of that sort of stuff. So, I liked it, but then again, I didn't. Moving back to the optimistic side, I could read this book in one sitting too, and it kept my attention reading it, so I should probably give this book four stars, right? But... I didn't because there was some part of the book that I didn't understand, so that was really interesting. And when I tried to figure out what that meant, I actually couldn't find anyone who read the book too. So will I reread this book? Probably, but not right now. Anyway, that is all for today, so if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button to show some support, subscribe to my booktube channel to get more videos like this, turn those notifications on to be alerted when I have a new booktube video out, and have a great day everyone!